Well, the Central Bank of the Bahamas recently released its monthly economic and financial development report for February. And preliminary indications state that effects from COVID-19 and travel restrictions started to accelerate in February. Central Bank Governor John Rawl spoke about how this will affect the economy on the heels of the devastation felt from Hurricane Dorian. We were able to get through the month of February without having any adverse effect from COVID-19. But it is really once you started to get into the month of March that you saw the, the rapid acceleration. Compared to Dorian, I think the difference is that there was still significant activity happening in, in, in the economy. Uh, islands outside of Abaco and Grand Bahama that were hurt by Dorian, but, but were not hurt by Dorian. Those islands were doing exceptionally well. They were still growing year on year in terms of their tourism, tourism activities. With, with COVID-19, those aspects of our economy are also on hold. So it, it, it's from a, a partial shutdown where you had the strength elsewhere in the Bahamas that were reasonably offsetting when you added in the construction activity and foreign investment to a complete shutdown because everything now has to, to be put on hold until we've gotten over the, the worst of the virus. Well, Governor Rohl was asked if central banks from across the region have consulted with the Bahamas on the COVID-19 pandemic. Within the Caribbean, we, we have a similar interest because for us it is managing the foreign exchange constraints and, 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 and recognizing that from a central banking point of view, uh, your, your capacity to stimulate an economy in this setting is very limited. So we're all providing the support to our fiscal authorities or ministries of finance in terms of how they manage the situation. Globally, it's similar, but looking at it from a global perspective, we're also taking lessons from each other in terms of the kinds of actions that central banks can take, particularly in terms of managing the interaction with the banking systems and how the banks have greater flexibility to manage difficulties in the, the, the lending side of their business. So generally you see a trend towards banks providing customers with the forbearance around pushing back the repayment on loans. And you have central banks and other regulatory authorities giving banks the, the slack in which to do that so that they are not penalized for the way they are treating these credit deferrals or the accruals on loans until people get back on their feet and, and can begin to, to make payments.